and I will Dr. John Chan from CBS KL. Uh, welcome to our Q&A session. So Dr. John Chan is our consultant cardiac thoracic surgeon here at CBS KL. Hi Dr. How are you? Okay, good. Thank you. Well, thank you for being with us today to answer a few questions. Thank we have you. a few questions for you. Sure, sure. Okay. Yes. So, Doctor, the first question that I think uh, most of us would want to know, uh, can you briefly tell us about your profession? What does a cardiothoracic surgeon do? Okay, so cardiothoracic, so the cardio refers to the heart and the thoracic refers to the lung and the chest. So basically, I'm a surgeon who operates on the heart, lung and chest, that is this part of the, of the body. Okay, so we have your questions and the first question is, uh, Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of mortality in the country. So, can you tell us what exactly is coronary artery disease and how is it treated? Yeah, well, basically, the, the, the heart is like any organ that has its own blood supply, and the blood vessels supplying the heart is called coronary arteries. So, coronary artery disease refers to diseases of the coronary arteries. So these can form uh, plaques or narrowings or blockages and this will affect the, uh, the function of the heart. So basically that is what coronary artery disease is. So it's basically an open heart surgery? Uh, depending on the severity of the coronary disease. So most patients when they have coronary disease is not so severe. So they have some uh, mild narrowing of the coronary arteries and that may give them some chest discomfort, chest pain, or they may get short of breath. So if the disease is not too severe, not too bad, then they can take medications to, to treat this condition. Now, in some patients, the disease is a bit worse if it causes significant blockages, uh, and if it involves just one or two vessels, then uh, stenting or putting a coronary stent to open up that vessel is the best treatment. Uh, some patients have even more severe disease. They, they have blockages of several of the blood vessels or narrowings of several of the blood vessels. So when the disease is very severe, then a bypass uh, surgery is the, the best option. So that basically involves uh, creating new bridges uh, to bypass all the old narrowings. Uh, so, so the heart, as you can see here, has blood vessels on the surface of the heart. So when there are a lot of uh, blockages on the heart, what we can do is we can take a uh, blood vessel from under the chest wall and some from uh, either the leg or the arm to uh, bypass these narrowings. It's essentially like building a new flyover or expressway to bypass the old roads. So the old roads are still there, but the blood has a new uh, expressway to bring blood to the heart. Interesting, yeah. interesting you put it that way. <laughs> Uh, but what are the risks of uh, doing a uh, coronary artery bypass valve surgery, or also known as a CABG? Is it better than uh, angio angiography? Uh, yes. So uh, the the risk of bypass routine bypass heart operation nowadays is about one percent. So that's the risk of not surviving the operation or having a stroke, bleeding, infection, or other organ uh, dysfunction. So the success rate is about 99% in most, in most patients. Uh, comparing bypass surgery and stents, as I say, it depends on the severity of the disease. So um, bypass surgery would give you a better long-term outcome, long-term survival compared to stents if you have multi-vessel coronary artery disease, uh, particularly if you're diabetic or if the heart function is poor. Uh, of course, if you have just one or two narrowings, then stenting is the best option. But when there are a lot of narrowings in multiple vessels, then bypass surgery is the best option in terms of the long-term outcome. And we're talking about living uh, beyond 5, 10 to 20 years. Uh, that is where bypass surgery has the advantage. In the short term, of course, the recovery from bypass is a bit longer than stenting. If you go for stenting, you are, you are out of hospital the next day, but uh, uh, bypass surgery, you're typically in hospital for about one week. Uh, after about a month, you're fairly okay. You can start driving again. Uh, but the full recovery takes up to three months for the bone to heal fully and for you to feel better than you feel uh, before the operation. So it's the short-term uh, short risk versus the long-term benefits of uh, having bypass surgery. Oh, okay. So, okay. 
So just now, I think you mentioned uh, about the valves. So there are valves in the heart. So can the valves get disease as well or, or some sort of affected? Uh, yes, the valve can certainly get disease. So if we go inside the heart, let's say we open the, the heart. The heart is a pump. So it has got valves inside and this ensure that blood flows in one direction through the heart. So these valves here can get leaky or they can get narrow. So when that happens, the patient typically gets a uh, very short of breath uh, because uh, then the blood which is supposed to be going in one direction through the heart goes uh, in two directions. So that puts some strain on the heart. So when that happens, we can repair the valve, which is the best option. Uh, if, some, if we can't repair the valve because it's still badly diseased, then we can replace it with an artificial valve. So this one is uh, considered as a major surgery? Uh, that's is, right, that's uh, right, yes. Uh, so you do major surgery and the surgery involves the aorta and the blood vessel coming out uh, of the heart. So what conditions uh, affect this? Yes, so, so, the, so we've talked about conditions of the heart, the coronaries, the valves. There is this big red thing here, this is called the aorta. This is the main blood vessel. Uh, when blood leaves the heart and the heart pumps. So this vessel can also get diseased by uh, getting bigger, ballooning up, what we call an aneurysm. And if that happens, then uh, we have to treat it to prevent it from tearing or rupturing. So we can replace uh, this part of the iota, essentially uh, using a graph like this. So, so this is a graph where we can replace uh, the iota and depending on the extent of the disease, we may or may not need to use this, this whole uh, tube growth. Okay, Doctor, the, this next question is maybe my favourite question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it says uh, you can treat sweaty hands. I'm sure a lot of people love this question. So, yes. okay, first, can you tell us why do people get sweaty hands and how do you treat it? Yes. So, so we, we are talking not uh, about a bit of sweaty hands. So, we, we have patients where the uh, the hands are truly very sweating. So they will come into the, the clinic and the hands are dripping with sweat. And these patients will tell me it's troubling them to the extent that they can't write. So a lot of them, uh, when they write a letter or they sign on documents, the, the documents get wet. Uh, students, when they take exams, it wets the exam paper. Some working with computers or their smartphones, they're unable to do it because it's just wet. So this, these are really uh, not the typical uh, sweaty hands, but uh, the really very bad, uh, uh, the badly diseased uh, sweating hands. So it's a condition we call hyperhidrosis, and um, most of these patients would have tried various treatments like creams uh, on the, on, and taking medication, and uh, it works in some patients, but in some patients it doesn't. So in those patients, we have an effective treatment where we can just cut the nerve. Uh, the nerve happens to travel at the back of the chest. So, it, so by using keyhole surgery, we can just divide that nerve and uh, stop the sweating and the hand becomes warm and dry. So that, that is one of the more minor operations we do. So we do big operations as uh, on the heart, on the iota, but we also do some minor surgery like the, uh, this, what we call sympathectomy. So the patients come to you with a sweaty hands. Are they young or old or anybody can they, get this? They, typically, they are the younger patients. Uh, typically, yes. But you can, what well, good thing you can uh, help them with this problem. <laughs> okay, uh, doctor. So my next question is: um, Are there any advances uh, or treatment for the heart for the heart surgery? Uh, yeah, there's, there are uh, advances, so we are moving more to less and less invasive surgery. So if we're talking about the, we talked about the heart valve disease uh, earlier. So rather than doing open surgery, we can do um, what we call uh, percutaneous uh, valve replacement. So we just make a small incision, usually in the groin, in the artery in the groin, and we can push this compressed valve up to the uh, aortic valve and we can deploy this all through a, a small incision in the heart. So this is uh, certainly possible. It has extended the range of patients we can treat because typically these are patients 
uh, who are not fit for the normal conventional uh, valve surgery. So we can offer them this new uh, transcatheter aortic valve implantation. It's still very new, so we do not know the long-term results with this uh, Start with this type of valve, we know it's good for up to five years, but beyond that, we don't know. So, what we are doing is we're offering it to patients who are not fit for the conventional surgery. If the patient is fit enough to go through the normal surgery, that's still the preferred approach because we know the long term outcomes of that. We know that it's good for you know, uh, the lifetime of the patient. But with this new uh, procedure, we don't know how what the long-term results are, but certainly for those who can't go for the conventional surgery because of risk factors, then this is uh, one of the options we can offer. Okay, uh, Dr. So one, uh, the last question, final question is that, what is your advice to those who are opting or thinking to do CABG? What, what's your advice to them? Uh, see, well, I think the, the, the advice, uh, the, the, best, the best thing is to prevent prevent the coronary disease in the first place. So we know all the risk factors like smoking, cholesterol, lack of exercise and so on. So I think it's important for everyone to lead the healthy lifestyle to uh, prevent coronary disease in the first place. Uh, but if the coronary disease is already there, everyone will need to take the medications for coronary disease. Uh, and then depending how severe the disease is, you may or may not need bypass surgery. Uh, but certainly if the disease is very bad, then bypass surgery will give you the uh, best uh, long-term survival. I think we have our current Prime Minister, Tun Mahathir, who's 93, and I think we can safely say that bypass surgery, which he's had twice, has prolonged his life. So it's not, it's not, the, uh, 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 not to say that uh, it is a serious condition, but we have very effective treatment uh, for this condition. Uh, to the extent that you can still live until uh, a very old age and be with a good quality of life. Okay, Dr. John, thank you so much uh, for answering all these questions. It has been very insightful and very useful, uh, not just to me, but for, for the viewers of it. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you for watching and I hope you like this video. So don't forget to follow and like us on our social media and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you!